I'm Mike, hello. Welcome to the 80s Nerdgasm Top 10 Movies of 1980. So the way we yeah. did this is that on our Instagram, if you don't follow us on Instagram, by the way, just stop this video, go to Instagram and follow us. Shame it's, on YouTube, We have like 45,000 followers at this point. You need, to, you need to go. Yeah, it's like a huge community of people who absolutely love the 80s. And it's just really fun. There's lots of comments. People become involved in a lot of clips. <laughs> a lot some, of good stuff. People get into some fun arguments with each other in the comments section. Lots of clips. Lots of images from movies. Behind the scenes stuff. Anyway, the point being, the way that we do this is that we each post our top five movies from each year in the '80s on there. And so Mike will do one. I do one. Jim does one. Say hi, Jim. Hi. Um, and uh, like Logan, Danny, like all our friends. And then actually, people will sometimes send them in. Like they'll direct message me a list and be like, "Hey, can you post this for me?" Yeah, of course. And then we ask people to list their top movies of that year in the comments, and they right? Do. And so what I do is I go through and I make a spreadsheet with all of the movies that are mentioned. And some years we have like 60 movies that get mentioned, yeah. right? Because we only do a top five. Right. So for uh, a number one finish, a movie gets five points. For number two, it gets four. For number three, it gets three. For number four, it gets two. two and then for five, five, it gets one. And then if someone lists more than five movies, everything after five, I just give one point to. And then I count all of the points, and that's how we order the films, basically. So what we're going to do here is we're just, we have the spreadsheet, we have the top ten, we're just going to go through, read them, we'll talk maybe like a minute or and so. And these aren't our list, soon. this is the this, So this is like the, the 80s Nergasm communities top, because a lot of the times, average. I tend to like, I don't know, my movies are not always the fit. Mike is a really good predictor of what will be the top five. I tend to get like one or two movies that sneak in there, but the stuff that I pick is usually not as popular. So um, at number ten, for 1980, Friday the 13th, which I don't think is a surprise that it's on the list, right? Because right. it's not, as we talked about in our ranking of the Jason movies, it's not a great movie. No. But it's kind of iconic because it is the movie that it's, started the Jason series. It's the name. Like, yeah. yeah. So you want to do, uh, oh, this will be fun for you to talk about. <laughs> so at number nine, we have Shogun Assassin, <laughs> a film I've never seen, yeah. I've heard of, <laughs> yeah, never so seen. That's one of the ones that like I mentioned it, and then I think Logan mentioned it, and then other fans of the movie were like, oh yeah, I really like that movie. So if you're unfamiliar with that movie, it's just like a trash-ass exploitation samurai movie that's super, super fun. It's like, the, the degree of bloodshed in that movie, it's like... A Tarantino, if like if Tarantino did a samurai movie, it's that. just like endless decapitations, blood flying everywhere. Like, and there's a the central setup is that the main guy has a baby, and the baby's in a little wooden cart, and the wooden cart has like missiles that shoot out of it, and like blades that come and cut people to pieces. So anyway, there you go. So gonna say, <laughs> now I'm getting really excited about it. At number eight, we have Superman two. Um, which I guess is not a surprise, right? Like, people love Superman movies. Yeah. And I should also mention, um, there are movies on these lists, like, I think um, King of Comedy is a good example, where that movie, well, like, its premiere was in 1982, but it was theatrically released in 83. Right. So we actually did some research on when did these movies actually properly release. And we tried to, as best as possible... Because we got votes, like for, I think Superman 2, the reason I bring this up is I think that's a movie that we got votes for in both 80 and 81, and we kind of just went through to determine where should we stick, which list should we stick this movie on. Because sometimes the release date is a little bit of a tricky thing. So, um, I mean, I think that's just one of those movies that people have nostalgic value for. People really like Superman. They always um, like Superman. And uh, Christopher Reeve was a great Superman. So, what do we have? So, number at? seven, we have Caddyshack. Um I thought it'd be a little higher, honestly, because it's like when everyone talks about like what are some of the greatest comedies of all time. It's always you, on there. Yeah. It's always on there, and you have such big names in it with Rodney Dangerfield and Bill Murray and, and so and forth. And Chevy Chase is Chevy in Chase it, right? In it. Yeah. So uh, kind of surprised it's a little lower on the list, and I'm looking at the votes. It doesn't have a whole lot of votes to it, so you know, a little bit of a surprise to me. But it was, it has the thing. That, so looking at the votes, like most of its votes were one or two. Yeah. So the people who liked it really liked it, but not a lot of people mentioned yeah. it. But I wonder if that's because we do have some followers who are people who were not around in the 80s who have gone back and Could discovered be. 80s culture. And a lot of, like, like people who discovered it through Synthwave, right? They're watching Blade Runner, Robocop. They're not watching, like, Caddyshack. They're not watching but Caddyshack. I have to say one thing about Caddyshack, which is that the there's a scene with Chevy Chase where he seems like he's just coked out of his freaking mind. And Bill Murray, I mean, his whole thing with his character is he's, like, dumb and kind of, like, drunken buffoon, right? And the disparity between their acting styles, it's insane. We're like, what is happening right now? Anyway, um, at number eight, six. seven, eight, six. I'm so bad at counting. Just hog. At number the fog. six. It's the fog, the John Carpenter movie. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised it's this high because uh, outside of John Carpenter fans, I, I wouldn't think it, it's not like a movie that everyone's seen or even heard about or even cares about other, yeah. other than people who like John Carpenter. It's not one of his movies, most well-known like films. That, no. yeah. um, it's kind of like a monster but movie, But it basically. did good. I think it's one of those two when, when someone mentioned it, like I think I had it on my list or you had it on your list, when some, when we mentioned it, everyone's everyone like, oh yeah, that's it, right? a good movie, yeah. and then they voted for it. Um, but... Kind of surprised to see it on this list. I was honestly. surprised that it was that high, honestly. Yeah, because yeah. it is one of those movies where like it's really fun. It's, it's I really like those monster movies and like Hammer films and stuff. But um, it's not like a favorite favorite. So what do we have next, Mike? Number five, we have Airplane. Duh. Duh. I mean, come on. Again, you don't even same, have to say anything about that movie. Kind of the same thing I would say about Caddyshack, right? Surely you can't be serious. Yeah, like every time it's like favorite comedies, Airplane, Caddyshack. What's my vector, Victor? You know, that kind of yeah. Stuff. Um, so number f- no, that's number five. Oh my God, five. Hog's not going to let me read any of these. just a monster. No, I just said that's number five. What's number four, <laughs> number Betty? Number four is an other blindingly obvious choice, Blues Brothers. Yep. I mean, how could that not be on this list? And I think we, we previously did a whole roundtable discussion about this list where we talked for like an hour. And so we're Jim trying was to go a little faster here. Yeah, but Jim, remember you mentioning that it's one of those movies where whenever it is on TV, people just, just sit it. down and watch it. Because it's like a classic, like that kind of movie. It's like always on TV. You always watch it. A lot of people owned it on VHS Easily and accessible. watched it over and over and again. And it's got votes in every category. So it's a film that everyone kind of knows, likes, and so forth. So getting into the top three. And the top three are like when you sit back and think about it, to me, like the really obvious choices yeah, for this sense. year. Um you want to do number three? Sure, I'll do number three. Number three is Raging Bull. Uh, of course, yeah. Really good movie, really well-reviewed critically. And I think it was a lot of people voted it the best movie of the 80s at the end of the decade. Yeah. Not with our list, no, not with like our critics and stuff. Uh, yeah. It's a really good movie. If you haven't seen it, it's one of Scorsese's best movies, in Maybe my De Niro's opinion. best performance. I mean, Maybe he, De Niro's Joe best Pesci is incredible it's in that just movie. Beasts, like, and, uh, uh, it's just beasts. I don't know what else to say. It's a really good movie. Number three makes sense to me. I... Personally, on my list, had it higher. I think I, think. I did too. Yeah, uh, I think I had it too, but I might have had a number three. Yeah, I can't I remember can't anything. Remember. But I think I put Kage Musha at number one. That I'm looking at this, of course. I don't know what Kage Musha yeah, is. So it's a curse album. No anyway, <laughs> number two. It's an animal. Number two <laughs> is another really obvious choice: The Shining. Yeah. Uh, what do you need to say about that movie? Nothing it's a good really. Movie. I like it. Some people. I mean, it kind of has a. Votes in every category, in every yeah. first week. So it's like you again. can tell that like people, yeah, have it's a lot well of known, opinions of it. It's well known, and it's like kind of almost like a cult classic in the sense, that, not that it didn't do good when it came out or wasn't well reviewed, but like... There are people I who are think, obsessed with it. And there's also yeah. people like who weren't even born who will know all about it and have seen it and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's a... I'll, I, if it wasn't for this first place movie, I imagine... If, if the first place movie wasn't released in 1980, yeah. The Shining would have taken all its votes probably. Uh, the first place movie has 180 more votes than the next closest movie. Not even close. So you could probably guess what it is. It's uh, The Empire Strikes Back. People and I don't know Star why you Wars. let me read it since I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. But, I, we, but... we were trying to do every other. Oh, I so gave if I'm up doing on the... that. I just, I just, I just picked just the ones I like. Just a hog just bulldozing I, I, everyone. I picked the ones like I like and, and just shoved my way in. Yeah. Um, and so the Empire Strikes Back, I think, is a lot of people consider to be the best Star Wars movie, right? Because it's the yeah. darkest one. It's the the, the characters Jim, are the most. Jim Jim's agree. given us. Well, you are you're a Rogue One fan, right? That's right. Yeah. So uh, I think from what I understand, talking to big Star Wars fans, those are the two that they always point to as like if you you be like a split with like and there's the Rogue One people, there's the and this Empire Strikes Back. This movie has people. at least. Three or four times the first place votes. Of it any just other crushed film. everything. It crushed everything. Um, it wasn't and, even close. So, so yeah, our friend Amber, who's been on episodes of our vinyl show before too, like Rogue One is her favorite Star Wars movie. Um, but yeah. I mean, if you're like a fan of the original trilogy and you saw those movies in theaters, like there's so much. In it. And you'll, as you'll see as we go through the '80s, so much of like the top tier voting is based on nostalgia. Yeah. And right? plus, like you know, Star Wars is big even now, so it's like right. of yeah. course that movie. Um, so. And it's again like there are movies that maybe I will rag on in later years that have high positions from like fuck that movie but I understand this one and like I, I love Star Wars as a kid and as an adult I've gone back and watched this movie and it is like I think it, there are like Return of the Jedi I don't think holds up as well this movie is still if you're a fan of that type of stuff it's still really good mm-hmm. um, so there you go so those are the top 10 movies of 1980 and again 1980 because we do oh. get a lot of people who are like Listing movies from 87. Commando. Like, yeah, like, like, nah, they think about later. 1980. We're not talking about the decade. We're talking about the, the year. year. 1980. And let us know what you think. If you agree, put Yeah, in give the us comments. some comments. Tell us what What's your favorites your are. If you want a recount, let us know. Because we actually, so we have a couple ties on here. Um, but we wanted to do 10 movies. Like, it's a top 10. We should have 10 movies. So um, Blues Brothers and uh, Airplane had the same number of votes. And then uh, Superman 2 and Shogun Assassin. But 
it's, we wanted to do a top ten. Exactly. Really. So those are um, that's the list. Uh, '80s Nerdgasm community, as I said, voted on on Instagram. My name is Will. Not Mike. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you with 1981. <laughs>